Now here's the question. Why does this fail? It sounded, I mean, look at the mousetrap. It sounded like such a good argument. You need all the parts or it doesn't work at all. Well, five or six years ago, I was on a television program on PBS called Firing Line, hosted by a guy named William F. Buckley, where they have these debates. And Michael Behe was there. He had a mousetrap. He made the argument about the mousetrap. I had a mousetrap in my briefcase and a pair of pliers. And to his absolute horror, I pulled the mousetrap out, a pair of pliers. I yanked one of the parts off the mousetrap and threw it away. I bent one of the other parts, and I still got the mousetrap to work. That was after his argument, you take a part away, mousetraps don't work. So I want to show you, I'm very proud of this. Um, one of my great scientific achievements. Um, what I did was I took out the bait holder. And as it turns out, if you take the hold down bar and you twist it, so it just goes under the spring, you have a four-part mousetrap. And lo and behold, if you have a really stupid mouse, and he comes up and bumps this to the side when he takes the bait, the hammer goes down, and he'll be just as dead as if he was killed with a five-part mousetrap. So it's not true that the four parts wouldn't have a function. I thought it was pretty clever. But then I got an email about a week later from a guy at University of Delaware named John McDonald. He's the clever guy. John said, Dear Ken, I like your four-part mousetrap demonstration on the TV show. Nice job. But why would you stop there? Why didn't you take another part away to make a three-part mousetrap which would also hold bait and catch mice. And when that had sunk in, take another part away. You can make a perfectly good two-part mousetrap. Mouse comes over, bumps the cheese. This thing comes down. And finally, the ultimate, which is the one-part mousetrap. Um, and therefore, this argument about all the parts having to be there is fictitious. Now, there's a better point than that. Some of you may have noticed that I've been wearing what you, you, look, what you think is a mousetrap as a tie clip. Well, it's actually not a mousetrap. Um, I've taken two parts and thrown them away. So I only have three parts here. I have the base plate, the spring, and the catch. You can't catch many mice with this, but it makes a perfectly functional, if not very elegant or attractive, tie clip. And that's the point, which is that the parts of a supposedly irreducibly complex machine can be used for different purposes. And in fact, if you have just two parts, you can even make a keychain out of my strap, and I'll be selling these later on on the way out in case you'd like to buy any of these. Um, so the point to be made is the mousetrap, ironically, is a perfect argument for evolution because it shows how the parts of what is supposedly an irreducibly complex machine can actually be used for other purposes. And you can look at what some of these other purposes are directly in the slide. And you might like to try some of them yourself with the permission, of course, of your parents or guardian. So the mousetrap example un uh, uh, unexpectedly provides a perfect argument in favor of evolution.